Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to 3D scan an assembly of parts like you see here. All right, to get started, let's talk about why would we want to do this? Why would we want to scan an assembly of parts? Now, what you see here uh, is a part we've 3D scanned before, but most of the time we've been scanning just this one part. Uh, most people don't probably realize there's two halves to this part, as you see here, and they fit together very precisely. So why would we want to scan them in an assembled position? Well, there's really a couple reasons. One is, Perhaps maybe we want to inspect it in its assembled position. We can certainly take the two parts apart and scan them and inspect them or reverse engineer them. But what if we needed to inspect them or would like to inspect them in their assembled state and not only the exterior, but the interior? Um, now, if you look at this, you'd say, well, <clears throat> how can I do that? The, you know, I, I, this scanner. In this case, we'll use the handy scan from Creaform. It's line of sight. Most scanners are line of sight, so how would I be able to scan the inside and see how they mate and see all the, you know, the internal geometry, how that interacts with each other? Well, we're going to get into that. So it could be inspection, and again, an assembled inspection we may want to take a look at. Or it could be reverse engineering, but we want to scan them in their assembled state versus what we normally do, which would be to scan the parts separately and then virtually put them together. And you can do that, and most of the times it's fine. But when you're virtually aligning things, it could be, depending on how you align it and what geometry you align it to, it could be a little bit different than in its true assembled state. So if we want to reverse engineer this and we have it in a very specific uh, you know, assembly or setup here, um, we're going to show you, again, how we can scan the inside and the outside of this part and have all the scan data perfectly aligned in the same orientation it is as it sits here. All right, so how are we going to do this? Uh, what is the trick here? So the key thing here is targets, okay? So you can see we've already applied the targets on this part, okay? We've got the rotary table with targets on it. Now, any scanner that uses targets probably can do this. I mean, it may depend. In this case, we're using the Creaform Scan Black, but the Go Scan, even the, the Peel Scanner, um, any scanner that, that uses targets technically could, uh, could do this. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do, you can see I've got the part standing up, and that's on purpose. And again, I have it on this rotary table. So I'm going to go into the software, into the VX Element software, and I'm going to tell it I want to scan positioning targets only. And that's the key thing and then I'm going to tell it to scan. So what it's going to do is just pick up the location of the targets. It's not going to 3D scan the part at all. So uh, the advantage of this is it's very fast. Okay. Now, why am I standing the part up and using the rotary table? Well, there's really two reasons. One is um, that's going to let me get front to back on the part as far as uh, you know, the assembled state. If it was laying down, I really wouldn't be able to get the targets on the other side. And then I use the rotary table, so I've, I've scanned all of this, okay, and it's picked up all the targets. Then I point it down on the table, and I use the targets on the table to come around the part, and then go back up and get all the targets on this side of the part, okay? And you can see this happens very, very fast. Now, the reason I want to use the table to get from the front side to the, to the back side is trying to go around very sharp corners is it's hard for the scanner as it gets here there's really no like targets here and it always has to see at least three targets so to get from this side to this side and be able to see you know continuously see targets is a real challenge that's why having targets on the table i just point down i use the targets on the table 
that allows me to come down and come back up. Now, you've probably seen us do this in, in other videos, nothing, uh, perhaps nothing new, but that allows me to capture all the targets. Now, the only thing is now, I don't want all the targets, meaning I don't want the targets on the table because we're gonna take this part, up, we're gonna take these two pieces and take them apart. We will lose the relationship with the targets on the table. So anytime you have a part where you have targets on the part and then perhaps on a table or a fixture or something else, and then you're gonna you know, change that setup, we need to get rid of the targets that the relationship now is broken between them, right? So if I move this, that relationship with the targets on the table is, is no longer valid. So it, it's pretty easy. All I do is I come over here in the software, I stop scanning, and I'm gonna orient this in a way where I can kind of you know, look straight on, kind of get that up on end. I select the positioning tab, and then I just gotta come in with my selection tool, and I'm gonna grab all those targets that are sitting on the table, okay? And then I'm just going to delete them, okay? So now that all I have left here, as you can see, is all the targets on the part, okay? Next, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So I'm gonna export just the positioning targets uh, into a file, and we'll make a directory here, we'll call it demo, and uh, we'll just call it green part targets, okay? What that's gonna do is it's gonna save what we call a target file, and it's just a text file and all that's in there is the, uh, uh, the XYZ point, the center point of that target, and then a uh, IJK vector, okay? So you can look at that there. So an IJK vector is the normal vector. So it finds the center of the target and then the normal vector, meaning the, the vector right there in the middle uh, that comes out perpendicular to that target, okay? So pretty common in CNC machining or any kind of point cloud data, anything like that. I mean, it's, it's really a point cloud. So center point of that target and that, that vector telling it what direction it's pointing. Okay, so that's all that's in there. Very simple file, very small. And then we can uh, take advantage of that file uh, in the next step. All right, next what I've done is I've disassembled our part. So there's the, uh, the, the top part there and here's the bottom. You can see I have it just by itself. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it standing up again. Um, now we're going to need to scan this, uh, this bottom here, which we'll, we'll show that in a minute. Uh, and if you want to learn more about this scanner or really any of the other Creoform scanners or other scanners that we have, um, you know, definitely check out some of the other videos on our, our YouTube page. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this scanner because we have very in-depth demos on, on how the scanner works. But now we're ready to start scanning. And now we're going to go back over here and we're going to tell it to scan surface, okay? So that's kind of the normal mode. Um, all, our, my resolution right now is set at half mil, that's, that's fine. Again, that's resolution, not accuracy. And then we say start scanning. Now the key here, because we have this target file still loaded, is I need to start scanning somewhere where I've already acquired the targets. So for example, if I tried to scan here in the back, we have not picked up those targets already. So it's gonna get confused. It'll probably start scanning, but then the relationship to this target file will not be correct. So I need to start somewhere where I've already pre-scanned and a great place will be in this case to start up here, kind of at the top where I'm away from everything else. It's only gonna see those targets. And what should happen is it should match them up with, the, uh, uh, with this file, right? So we go ahead and start scanning and we should see right away, it should make sense and it does, if you ever do this and it doesn't look right, you know, simply start over, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the front since I'm here, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time scanning this part uh, because, you know, we've got demos again on the scanners. So um, I've scanned the front, let me get a little bit more down in here, you get the general idea. I've scanned the front and then the same, we're gonna use the same technique down on the table Okay, come around, and I don't really care if I pick up much of the table. And now we're gonna roll up inside the part. Now we're gonna start acquiring new targets, and that's okay. Um, we've started with existing targets, and now we're gonna scan, you know, we're gonna start adding or picking up new targets, which is just fine. So you can see what's going on here, 
okay? And I'll keep moving around. And you would just, you know, continue on and scan it, okay? So this is almost the same as just scanning the part. The difference is, is we've stored those targets ahead of time, okay? So just get a little bit more. So again, you just would work around and get this all scanned, okay? But you can see all those, uh, let me turn it. You see all those other targets from the top side that are still there, okay? So that's the general idea. We've scanned the first part. Now to get the bottom, I could stop, delete the targets on the table, flip the part over, start somewhere again where the, you know, on the existing targets and scan around, okay? And again, you can see that in some other videos. So that's our first part. So let me show you now what we're gonna do to scan the second part and how that will align with this scan data. All right, so moving along, we've got our first scan done. We've taken, uh, uh, taken that part off, put it over here, and now we've uh, mounted up the second part uh, in a similar position, so we've got it kind of up on end. We're using a little um, fixture here to hold it just because the part won't stand up on its own. Uh, and now we're ready to go ahead and scan the second part. So if we look here on the screen, you can see we've got the first scan all done, looks pretty good. And again, I didn't go in and get every nook and cranny, but I've got enough uh, scan data here to, to prove how this works. And then you can kind of see those, those uh, uh, targets of the uh, first part. So we have two choices on how we can proceed next. We can just save this session file, the CreaForm session file, um, and then make a new file and then import those targets back in and start scanning. Or we can just do what's called add a scan. And that's what I'm gonna do because it's easier. So when I click add a scan, it asks me a few questions. One of them being, what components from the first scan do you wanna bring into this new scan? One of them is positioning targets, one of them is clipping objects, which allows you to basically create uh, planes or areas that you do not want scan data um, to go. I'm not gonna get into that. Um, we've got a great video on the VX Element software and, and you can see all that. So I'm gonna click positioning targets. And what's gonna happen here is it's gonna set up a new scan. So over in our tree, now we have scan two. And right now you'll see the first part, it's kind of grayed out. Once we start scanning, it'll turn off. But uh, all we do now is say start scan. And just like before, what I need to do is start scanning somewhere where we already have targets in that file, okay? So we'll start up in here and then we'll start scanning and you'll see what happens. Okay, so the targets come back on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna scan the front here. Let me get a little bit of this. Okay, and then we're gonna go back and turn that other scan on just so you can see what's going on. So let's just kind of get the front. Okay, we won't move around to the back just yet. Okay. All right, so let's just get a little along the edge here so you can kind of see where they made up. Okay, so if I hit stop scan, and I come over here in the software, and let's just turn back on the first scan. Stop scanning first. Okay, you can see what's going on here. Now, they don't line up, uh, or they're not super tight because there's actually a gasket seal in there. Uh, but you can see they are perfectly aligned. The holes are lined up, okay? So let's go ahead and continue on. Let's turn off that first scan. And it, uh, let's do this real quick. Okay, so take a look at the back. There's nothing there yet, okay? So we'll go ahead and continue scanning. And again, I gotta start somewhere I already was. Okay, down onto the table. Okay, and then we're gonna go back up inside and again, I'll just do a quick scan. When we're done, I'll scan it really well, and then we'll go in the software and uh, show you what they look like, okay? In a little more detail. So let me just get a quick scan in here. Okay, so we've got the inside. Again, let's stop scanning. Okay, and if we bring back on. So if you look in here, you can see the inside of the other side that we've already scanned, or sorry, that's the top part. And if we hide scan two, you can see I've already scanned the inside, okay? So basically what we end up with is two parts fully scanned inside and out. 
um, in, in this alignment that they were assembled in, okay? So again, the difference between just scanning separate parts and digitally aligning them is depending on how they're physically aligned, you know, they could be different because when you digitally align things, you kind of have to do like a best fit or you pick key geometry like holes or whatever. And, you know, that may not be the same alignment that they're in in the, in the real, you know, physical world. So what's nice about this and whether it's two parts or 10 parts, as long as you could put targets on them and, and acquire, you know, targets, this wouldn't work if you had internal geometries that you couldn't see. It'd have to be, you know, exterior parts where you could at least get three targets on them. So, you know, they don't have to be very big parts, but think of an eng engine assembly or a really complex piece of, I don't know, automation equipment or something, and you want to get it in that assembled state, then take it all apart and scan all the stuff you can't see. So, so that's the key here, whether it's inspection or reverse engineering, we are 3D scanning these parts in their physical, uh, you know, assembled position. So um, lastly, we'll go in the software. I'll finish scanning here. We'll go in the software and take a, you know, closer look and you can see the data, but, but that's, uh, uh, that's it for the scanning part. So here is a animation that we created from the 3D CAD models that we built from the scan data. So as we discussed, uh, this scan data was scanned in that assembled state. So the CAD models we then built from that scan data are also in that very specific assembled state, as you see here. And then finally, we also generated some inspection reports and what you see here is just the color deviation map uh, of those reports. And again, this is all based on that 3D scanned assembled state. So you can see the results will be reflective of that in that exact assembly state is what you see the color deviation map here. All right, so that wraps up this video on 3D scanning an assembly as an assembly and then taking apart and scanning the individual pieces. Now, again, if you want to learn more about any of the Koreaform scanners and some of the other scanners uh, we sell, definitely check out our YouTube channel. If this is something of interest to you and you want to get more information, you can also uh, contact us in the description below. There's a, a link to a, a quick contact form and we could do a virtual demo or an in-person demo or really just find out uh, you know, what you may be interested in and we can go from there.